Hello there, this is Off to Battle, and I'm doing a reaction video to Great Book of Grudges about Sega Financials. And here's where I expose that, uh, you see the little gray here. Uh, I am not as young as I used to be, so... I want to respond to some of this stuff as somebody who knows enough to be dangerous about a lot of subjects, but is not a financial expert. Uh, this is for the financial year that ended in the 31st of March 2023 this year. Some stuff is stuff that we've already known so far, other stuff could be new. I do want to state one thing before we jump in here. I am of course not a financial expert. It's very important here to state because a lot of YouTubers seem to think that they're financial experts when they're not. Um... And neither am I, but I'm still going to comment on this. I just want to talk about this because Obviously, this affects us, this affects us as fans, this affects a bunch of friends that we might have in Creative Assembly, and yeah, let's begin. Can't so you just feel the anticipation, here, which shows <laughs> that By the end of the last financial year, 31st of March 2023, there was a turnover of 153 million, where compared to the previous year, the turnover was 137 million. Obviously, some more money has been made there, and we can see that there when we can actually see the operating profit. So, yeah, there, there's been a jump in terms of profit that Creative Assembly have made overall. So, the profit for this year after taxation is 8,357,000 compared to the overall of the 2022. This is at the bottom of the page, by the way, of 6,857,000. So, yeah, you know, costs are up, but also your money is up too. It's just kind of funny when you look at it like this, right? Net assets has jumped up quite dramatically, almost by 10 million. That's expected considering that Creative Assembly recently invested in a CGI studio, I believe. They have also made a lot of- No, how did this come about? It's very, very simple. So obviously they jacked up the price of their DLCs. And even though that they may have sold less units of Shadows of Change, they're still making more money on paper. Even though that they've shipped fewer copies of the DLC, they've still made more money because they jacked up the price that much. So that's how we get this kind of number. Purchases in recent times to other studios, extra equipment, that is all well known. Uh, once again, kind of funny when you say costs are up. Yeah, the costs are up because you keep buying crap that you might not actually use. Kind of funny, if you look to the key performance indicators just above that, they say there, the increase in operating profit can be attributed to revenue growing faster than costs. Again, costs are up, aren't they? But apparently So in spite of all that, they've made more money. That's the key thing to take from this. Apparently your revenue is higher, yet you still feel the need to threaten the fan base, uh, which, yeah, I'm a little bit annoyed about. We don't need to be retold. And They're up, but again, they jacked up the price so much that the people that did buy fewer numbers of the DLC are still jacking up the profit by that much. So, selling your soul is valuable in the short term. You gain financially from doing it. It's just in the longer term that you cause the big problems. Also, it's the case of, well, you're firing a bunch of people now, right? This does obviously come into question. If you're a financial expert, please let me know what this actually means if I'm misinterpreting it. But it does feel like um, a little bit of a slap to the face. Not being funny, but when you see a rather large increase in profit, you don't really think about... What it means is that Sega got tired of uh, seeing this hyena's disaster and said, no, this isn't going to happen. And people who are associated with that, and even people who are not. What Sega said was that CA has to focus on its core business. Keep that in mind as we proceed. Poor family owned company type of situation, right? Does someone need a new boat or does someone just need a buttload of cocaine? Or both? Continuing on the strategic report, there is a continued business outlook, which is, you know, they've been getting some cash coming in. There's nothing too interesting. They've said that they've had a rise. In of sales course it's since you know the pandemic it's come on let's not be silly here. obviously makes sense everyone was at home so people were gaming more they're continuing to monitor the situation with uk and russia because that has affected the uk in terms of heating and so on it has affected us all interest rates are rising yes there is pretty much a recession happening throughout the world and that is affecting disposable household income which means that people can't buy stuff again yeah i mean 
everything is here is very obvious. It doesn't take a statement for for that to say anything. What is kind of interesting is obviously yeah. it's like, well, if you're expecting people not to buy as much, why are you putting the DLC? It is. The 150% of the price. Okay, continuing, we've got another part here. Everything seems normal with the people, business relationships, community and environment. Uh, could be better. They're legally uh, required to say usual. it. Though. But competitors, this one we have to read over. A significant portion of the studio's resources are because they think people will buy it. Franchise. The underperformance of a title could not have everybody, but committed on the funding Total War Warhammer players. As development teams may need to be rationalized. Any events or circumstance that negatively impact the Total War franchise, such as product or service quality, competing products, but it's not what's going to kill Total War. What's going to kill Total War is you guys. The underperformance of a title, well, you put Total War money into hyenas. That was a colossal waste of cash. You put Total War money into... Who is this intended for? It's not intended for you and me or for a great book of gorgeous. It's not intended for the public investors. This is a shot across the bow with a Roman catapult at Sega Senpa. This is... You can't make us cut too much, or else it's going to impact our core business. You want to talk core business? Lay off about the layoffs. Don't make us cut to the bone, because it's going to impact your financials. Not just our financials, but your financials. This is basically trying to take Sega's profitability hostage and say that you can't do this. You have to have a gentle touch you can't make us cut any more than this. There cannot be a second round of layoffs. You must back down. That's the audience. That's the message. Other products that we know exist because you guys have hinted towards. So, yeah, that's taking from Total War money. You've put Total War into Pharaoh, and unfortunately, Pharaoh was something that people didn't want. If you would have focus tested this properly rather than going in through your usual, I guess, tester group, those are the people who usually test your games they would have told you that this wouldn't sell. You've got a bunch of yes-men involved. Yeah, but that didn't impact... The Total War fandom did not kill hyenas. Sega did. And it's not to save money. I mean, this wasn't the Batgirl uh, catastrophe. It's not a... T Maybe it's a tax write-off in a sense, but the point is that, oh, it's an almost finished game. Well, they didn't want to market it. They didn't want to have the cost of trying to support it. And that's why they didn't want one more cent to go towards it because they saw it as a black hole. Just absorbing all that latent energy and nothing comes out. Not because they were saving money, because they lost a lot of money in essence. But no more. They won't lose another dime over it. So that's why they just had to, you know, pull the plug. And they're not going to tell you no otherwise because they're scared of losing their position. That's how it clearly works. And before anyone says, well, are you certain that they've got a focus test group and stuff like that? Yes, because every company has this, right? It's the same thing that happens with TV shows and stuff. There's focus tests just to see how things could potentially work before it makes it out into the public to see if it's going to make any money. If they don't have that, then holy crap, they do need one really badly. But in my case, I expect it to be focusing around some sort of yes men situation, mostly because, I mean, Shadows of Change being one of those perfect examples, right? But you have no competitors. Obviously, there's loads of people who say that they're going to be the next Total War and stuff. I'm going to stop you there. Because with all due respect, no, this wasn't subject to a focus group beyond the fact that Troy existed. When Troy was done, this plan was set. I mean, everybody said this was a DLC for Troy, meaning that its existence was preordained as soon as Troy, as soon as the foundations were laid, as soon as you started building the monuments in ancient Greece, the, it was going to happen. It's uh, Babylon or whatever is going to happen, or at least is meant to happen. These were decisions that were made at the very beginning. It's just like how nobody invented the Three Kingdoms DLC that uh, they stopped doing. It was planned from the beginning like that because that's the basics of running this by the suits, running this by Sega Senpai, running, the, you know, getting the heads of Creative Assembly to sign off on the project. This was planned at the start. You can't have Troy without Pharaoh. It is not going to work like that because you're putting together a plan and the plan was start with Troy, you do Pharaoh, whatever the other run is, whatever it's supposed to be called. I don't care. 
and you shouldn't really care either. The point is, it was meant as part of a trilogy of sorts, or something that became a trilogy because it stopped being Troy DLC. So, the point is, at that point, all the stuff is done. There is no more focus testing. There is no... It's all resolved with the initial pitch. If they sign off on Troy, they've signed off on Pharaoh, they've signed off on Babylon or whatever, because it's all part of the same package. It's all part of the same project. So it's not that they had a new focus group to test, is Pharaoh going to sell? No, they were committed from the start. They were committed. There was no altering where this uh, gigantic... Uh, the Exxon Valdez, let's say. The Exxon Valdez was going straight ahead. There was no deviation. We're not going to consider any deviations. And they weren't going to consider any deviations until well, now, basically, because of uh, the disaster that it's been. But this is why that they didn't have a separate focus to test this. When they made the decision to sell it as a full-priced game, uh, that was new, but... Uh, the decision to actually make Pharaoh at all, that was years ago. Like that, but it just never happens. Total War, the reason why people don't do a Total War style game is because the amount of work that goes into Total War does not really have that incentive, right? There's not that much profit involved. You might be going, well, 8 million last year, but still, they could have made more if it would have sold. The, the point is that the decisions were made so many years ago that... Uh, there was no changing it now. And Sega wasn't riding them so hard as to say that, okay, you made Troy, you got Epic to uh, buy that game for you and give you money so you could continue development and put that toward Pharaoh. But you've got nothing else. It's not going to sell. They didn't do that. They didn't go riding them hard to the point that they stopped Hyenas when it was only 50 million instead of 100 million. That didn't happen. So, Sega was trying to be uh, laissez-faire is the fancy French term. Leave them alone, they know what they're doing. Well, they sort of kind of know, and they didn't know enough. But the point is that it's not that CA was going to do some sort of fresh focus group. Sega would want to, I'm sure. But then Sega would have to make the decision, no, you're not going to do Pharaoh. And then what? Then you're controlling what they're doing inside CA, which is a very awkward situation for everybody. Just as much, but be less work intensive. Considering the amount of work that goes into a Total War game when the engine is collapsing into itself. You know what Coke says? Their competitor is the water tap. They don't see Pepsi as the competitor. They see the water tap as the competitor. So CA's competition is basically apathy. That's their competition. And... Right now, apathy is running neck and neck. Um, yeah, it must take a lot more time, and it would be easier if they would have done something on Unreal Engine, which obviously we know Creative Assembly have now started working on Unreal Engine through some job listings that came out like about a month ago or something. Continuing once again, we have something quite interesting in licensing. So That's with all the money that they shoveled into the fireplace and lit. So yes, there's money in Total War. There's interest in Total War. So, many of our products and services are based or on or incorporate intellectual property owned by others. Our Total War Warhammer products include rights license from Games Workshop. Competition for these license and rights is intense. If we're unable to maintain these licenses and rights or obtain Additional licenses or rights with significant uh, commercial value, our ability to develop successful and engaging products and services may ad be adversely affected or our revenue and profitability may decline significantly. Well, no offense, my dudes, but you're kind of fucking the family dog now with... Um yeah. With Warhammer, right? The current issues with the licensed products are your issues and your issues alone, and obviously you need to make sure that that gets better off. Again, referencing for future stuff, like for example, Total War. Again, this is a shot across the bow to Sega. It's not about us, it's not about you out there, it's about Sega. It's saying you cannot cut to the bone, or else we'll be unable to get these intellectual properties rented. And then we won't be able to make the cool games, and then we'll be stuck with historical garbage. See where I'm going with this? They're saying that you can't cut our money to the point that 
we won't be able to get IPs because other companies will get it and then produce, you know, awful games. And uh, we won't be able to produce Warhammer games anymore. We won't be able. To, we will lack the resources, the intellectual property resources, to be able to produce things that are profitable for you, Sega. That's their message. So this isn't really about us here. It's about impressing the suits in Japan. Warhammer 40k, which I'm fairly certain is going to happen, and the potential of possibly getting in Warhammer the Old World stuff. It's really, really important. Especially yes, which means that we're taking your profitability hostage and saying, you need to leave us enough so that we can go get the next IP. Especially if you want to keep the Warhammer Fantasy game alive to make sure that you have enough material for longevity, extra profit, and so on. I will keep hammering that until you actually understand it. No, they're not. No, they're not. Watch any YouTube video on Games Workshop's practices, and you'll understand that Games Workshop Senpai has a big say. There's a lot of stuff that CA can't do, because Games Workshop does not allow it to do them. But that's basically the downside of using third-party IPs. Um, everything else seems normal. Kind of funny that they mentioned that a breach of IT security could result in major business disruption. I mean... They didn't even need a breach, just people are leaking uh, for obvious reasons. It's a, it's a bit of a shame, obviously, because um, I know there's people being affected that really shouldn't really be affected. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not a good time right now. Which means that Sega cannot cut to the bone. That's my point. This is just continuously about Sega, Sega, Sega. Don't beat us any further. Okay, there's a few important things to talk about in this section, which is from the director's report, nothing was too important before, but if you go into engagement with suppliers, customers, and others, if we go just to the third paragraph, community engagement is also a critical success factor as we transition to a games as a it's service disruption, yeah. business model designed to provide players with enhanced gameplay experience. If this whole thing with the Steam forums is an indicator of how you intend to succeed with community relations. Um, give up now. Give up. Oh, you already saw how your... whatever hyenas were supposed to be <laughs> worked. Please, don't make the same mistake twice. We don't need costs are up again. Okay, let's go into growing or going concern. The financial statements have been prepared on a going concern basis, which the directors considered to be appropriate for the following reasons. The directors have prepared cash flow for- Uh, you remember what I said about Games Workshop? They've been trying th to have a subscription service for themselves. Forecast for a period of 12 months from the date of approval of these financial statements. In other words... In other words, this is as much a ransom letter as a financial report. You can't come any further! Cut any further, and this empire dies. I've been meaning to make a reaction video for stuff for a while, but uh, this is when I have the tech lined up to make it work right. But I'm just going to say, this absolutely needed to happen. Sega had to tell them, focus on your core business. Focus, focus, focus. They had to say, knock it off. They had to say, stop doing hyenas stuff. And I'm being far more polite than Good Book of Roses, but he's had a tough few months too. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that this is the start of the turnaround if there is one. They had to get a slap on the head and they had to be told, you need to shape up. And their response is, well, you need to keep forking over the money or we'll never make another dime for you again. So you need to keep sending the money during our transition period to focusing on our core business, okay? Okay? That's the intent of it. Six, so take that, I don't know. Uh, probably just say, you still have to shape up. Uh, this is a necessary step. There is give and take. The corporations have to talk to each other like this in public because the law forces them to. And what it comes down to is, uh, this is CA's response, this is they're digging in their heels to a certain extent, but the point is they've been told, focus on Warhammer, and they're like, well, we need money for that. 
And yes, they do need a certain amount of money from Sega to keep doing that, or else they're going to have, you know, they're, they're like a shark. If they don't keep moving through the water, uh, it's going to be suffocation. So, CA, the shark, is going to have to keep moving in order to get that energy and keep that momentum going and to just try and turn this around. But the point is that they've made more money by sacrificing their long-term future. Well, they have to earn some of that back, obviously. And we know what that's all about. Thrones of Decay, etc. They need to keep financing so that they can actually make the DLC and actually make some money. But they also need it to be a good product or nothing of the, nothing's going anywhere if it isn't an actual good product. And that's the challenge. And we'll see what they do with it. We'll see what their response is to the actual challenge because Sega's not going to cut them off and completely kill off Total War. That's not the point of stopping hyenas. Stopping hyenas was, you shape up CA and make us proud. Well, let's see what they do with it. Anyway, this has been Off to Battle, and I hope you like the background image, my local photography. Uh, it was the eve of a hurricane. Uh, so anyway, people seem to like it. We'll see. Take care, have fun out there. See you next time.